Whether it's Republican candidates on the debate stage or Democrats in the White House, it's pretty obvious the political class wants you to focus on the next election and forget about the last one. If you don't, it's no mystery what might happen. Just look at the arrests of January 6 protesters still taking place all over this country more than two and a half years later. If you were at the Capitol, you're probably waiting to find out if you're next. But in this country, there's no official caste system. No matter how powerful someone is, if they do something wrong, they have to answer for it. It may not always work that way, but it's how our legal system was designed. And the words carved into the stone of the highest court in the land still read equal justice under law. Four brothers from Utah are testing that theory. They didn't go to the Capitol, but like many of those who did, they believe the most powerful politicians in this nation aren't doing their duty. And they think it's time they face the music. Hello, Mr. Carson. We're here to give you a musical salute on your birthday. Once upon a time, the Brunson brothers and their trumpets could stop any show with a little sass and a whole lot of noise. Who are those guys? Are they? The Brunson brothers. The what? The Brunson brothers. The Brunson brothers. brothers. The Brunson brothers. Yeah. That's very nice. The Brunson uh -huh. brothers. And they were Arlen, Rayland, Darren, and Gaynor. When they got that call to hurry on down to the Carson show with their trumpets, it was 1985, and the four of them were pretty broke and mostly unknown. But it didn't stay that way for too long. Four young men came out of nowhere and blazed a trail through a world that wasn't built for people like them. That much hasn't changed. Almost 30 years later, they're doing it again. Only this time, it's the world of politics, not music. And they've jumped into the ring for the fight of their lives. A couple of years ago, my brothers and I decided to file a lawsuit having to do with uh, members of Congress breaking their oath of office. Article 6 of the Constitution is very clear. It states that they shall be bound by oath to this Constitution. When we heard four brothers, better known for blasting their horns than practicing law, had weighed in on the 2020 election controversy and was suing Congress for failing to investigate charges of fraud. We tracked them down earlier this year in the Rocky Mountain city of Provo, Utah, where they're from, to find out what they were thinking. And they explained why to them, a rigged election is an act of war. A rigged election will take down this country faster than anything else. We cannot have a rigged election. War puts into power its victor. A rigged election does the exact same thing. It puts into power its victor, only there's not a loss of life and property. So basically what you have is members of Congress that are saying this. They're saying, hey, we're at war. We need to investigate the allegations that the election's rigged. Meet Darren Brunson. Of the four brothers, believe it or not, he's the quieter one. He's not a lawyer, but he started suing banks years ago, and he's the legal brain behind the Brunson lawsuits. Then there's Loy, also known by his middle name, Arlen. He's the oldest, once ran for local office, published a pocket constitution with all the founding documents, and at an event, got President Trump to answer his questions on the Federal Reserve. Hello, uh, Mr. Trump, my name is Lloyd Brunson. You've inspired, I'm over here on your right. Oh, you can go, that's the one I want to do. <laughs> yeah. He's weird. Not to be overlooked, Rollin Brunson. He's the funny one. She's looking at me and she's looking at me like this and goes, all right, I'll take you 300 bucks. <laughs> With a quick smile and a lot to say. You got my brother Lloyd here talking to a gal, you know, and you got my brother Gaynor here. He's wondering what he's going to be doing next. At 60, Gaynor's the baby of the family and the only one who made music his full-time career with a professional recording studio and a talent for drums that rivals his lips. 
on a cold winter night in Provo, a city founded by Mormon settlers almost 175 years ago. The brothers told me they were all concerned with what they saw in 2020. Simply put, they didn't buy the outcome of the presidential election. The 2020 election was the most secure in U.S. history. The most secure in history. Most secure ever. The most secure in American history. The most secure in American history. We give the president's claim of widespread voting fraud not true on the trust index. But it was really what happened on the floor of Congress on January 6 that poured fuel on the Brunson fire. Loy said they expected lawmakers to put the Constitution over partisanship and investigate the allegations of fraud as urged by Senator Ted Cruz when Congress met to confirm the results as certified by each state. Consider the claims, consider the facts, consider the evidence and make a conclusive determination whether and to what extent this election complied with the Constitution and with federal law. Cruz reminded lawmakers this was not the first time the country had faced this issue, and there was already a method for examining allegations of voting irregularities, only it meant going back almost 150 years. For that, I look to history, to the precedent of the 1876 election, the Hayes-Tilden election where this Congress appointed an electoral commission to examine claims of voter fraud. Five House members, five senators, five Supreme Court justices examined the evidence and rendered a judgment. And what I would urge of this body is that we do the same, that we appoint an electoral commission to conduct a 10-day emergency audit. Consider the evidence. Darren Brunson said he was glued to the screen all night long. Congress is counting all the votes, you know, to decide who's going to be the next president of the United States. I watched that hearing until 4 or 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning, and what I saw upset me. Why? What upset you? Because here are these members of Congress that have taken an oath to protect and defend the Constitution, and they were mocking it, and they're violating the Constitution because members of Congress had come forth and said, listen, the election has been rigged. We got affidavits. We got all this information. We need to do an investigation before we count these votes. And when you say that, violating their oath of office, in what way specifically? What do you mean? By failing to defend the Constitution Constitution of the United States against all enemies, both foreign and domestic, and that's an act of treason. They have mocked God when they did that. What's the evidence? The, the affidavits. It's not about whether there was enough evidence or not to make to change the outcome. That's not what this case is about, really. This is what about, is it about? Lawrence? It's about investigating to make sure that the conclusions are sound and correct and true. Well, basically, the argument is you're wrong for trying. Yeah. Yeah. What would you say to that? That's an insult to the people. Well, it's like I'm wrong for trying to protect your rights. Really? A person asking me that. You're wrong for trying to protect my rights. I'm like, are you, dis are you that discouraged? Are you that hopeless? Well, I don't believe there was fraud in the election. What if, what if they say that? Well... You're putting our democracy at risk, Loy. Well... It's dangerous. What exactly are we putting at risk? What exactly are we threatening? Well, you're threatening people's faith in the elections. This election has already been declared the most secure election in history. And there's been hundreds of court cases that have failed. There's been no evidence of widespread fraud. And by refusing to accept the results and uh, casting doubt over the election, you are shaking the foundations of this country because if people don't accept the results, it's damaging to the country. You know what I say? What? Good, because your faith should be shaken up because if you don't, you're gonna see hell pour upon you like you've never seen before in this country. We're fast moving in the wrong direction. Yes, we're gonna shake your faith with what is called the truth. Do you wanna see the truth? If you're afraid of the truth, then yeah, you shouldn't be here. You should want to know the truth. And there's been a lot of evidence showing that this is the truth, that the election has been rigged. The Bruntons are really just a band of loyal brothers who grew up in a time and a family where defending the Constitution was still regarded as a sacred duty, not an act of domestic terror. Every Sunday, our dad would sit in the living room and we would come in from church or something like that. And he would ask us like these deep 
thought-provoking questions and cause us to think and, and talk. political yeah, questions yeah, too. Yeah. I think I was like 12 or 13 or 14 in that age, and I think I, I remember. I don't know if you guys remember, but uh, uh, our dad introduced a book to us called *The Law* by Frederick Bastier. And it talks about the purpose of the law. And our dad also taught us a lot about the Constitution. Kind of like an early version of homeschool. I remember him saying, what is the law, Frederick Bastier? And he says, it's the, it's the collective organization of the individual right to lawful defense. Yeah, he still remembers that, yeah. yeah. So we started uh, learning about these things. And we started realizing that our government isn't all cracked up to what... It should be. Should be. And then our dad taught us about our God-given rights, how that everyone that's born is born with God-given rights. And I think between reading the book, The Law, and then being taught about our God-given rights, and that was when I began to realize, you know, the purpose of government and the purpose of the Constitution. And it just whoo, grabbed me. I just thought, I know I'm going to do something with the law. And he did. Boy, he is. <laughs> Boy, did he ever. When Congress rejected Cruz's recommendations and chose not to act, the Brunsons sprung into action. I was really disturbed, and I was thinking, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I, I just can't sit here and do nothing. But then I had the thought, the argument in my mind, who am I? How can I possibly cause anything to happen against the president, the vice president, and all these members of Congress that are just violating their oath of office. What, what can I do? What can I do? So, so I was talking to my brothers from time to time. Finally, I just called up uh, Loy and I says, Loy, I want to sue them. You know, it may not go anywhere. It may not do anything. But I want to sue that. But I, I want you to be the plaintiff. And he was like, yeah. Led by Darren, they filed two complaints, one in federal court with oldest brother Loy Arlen Brunson as plaintiff, the other with Roland J. Brunson, which went from state court to federal to the Supreme Court. The lawsuits caught fire in the minds of many, especially those still convinced the election had been stolen. And as news spread, people responded, sending over 60,000 letters of support to the Supreme Court. In both cases, the Brunsons asserted some 388 public officials, including 385 members of Congress, former Vice President Mike Pence, current Vice President Kamala Harris, and yes, President Joe Biden himself, should possibly be removed from office, deemed unfit to serve, and barred from holding office again. Perhaps one of the more satisfying parts of the process for the brothers, figuring out how, once the suits were filed, they could serve a summons on every one of the 388 respondents. Got an idea. Okay, how about I call up the post office? So I call them up and I says, can you guys be process servers? They're like, yeah, we can. Oh, you got to be kidding. Oh, yeah, yeah, we are actually recognized as officers of the court. And all you got to do is pay that's going to be a signature, proof of signature from a representative or from the person you're suing, and it will count. I'm like, you got to be kidding. Oh, yeah, it'll count in court. We will send you proof that it was been served. I'm like, you got to be freaking kidding me. How much would it cost? $12.80. You're on. <laughs> so Did you tell them who? <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. You said you were suing the president. They said no problem. Said, no problem. We will be the process service. We, if there's an agent in behalf of the president who signs as a re receiving this, they have been officially served. So did that happen? Yeah, I got the proof of service from the post office. Okay, Joe Biden has been officially served. I'm like, oh. I want to see it. Okay, I'll show you. I'll show it to you. Um, Kamala Harris has been officially served. <gasps> Nancy Pelosi has been officially served. I'm like, <laughs> they got 30 days to answer or they're in default, okay? True to his word, Roland Brunson did produce those receipts or proof of service. In the Brunson suits, they acknowledged that removing the president would be a national security risk. So they assert whoever was the rightful winner, in this case, Donald Trump, should be given the opportunity to serve. The brothers insisted reinstating Trump was not their main goal, in spite of what the defendants said in their motion to dismiss. Are you Trump lovers? Would you be doing this if it wasn't Trump? Absolutely. In fact, even in the case we're talking about, it, didn't, it has nothing to do with Trump. 
That's not what this is about. This is not about the results of an election. This is about uh, violating their oath of office by not investigating an election. Well, that's see, good. see, we're asking that both sides be removed, not just Democrats, but Republicans as well. Many think the Brunson brothers' legal theories are fanciful, not grounded in statutory or constitutional law. They were hoping to settle that at the Supreme Court. Rollins' case did make it onto the docket twice, and so did Loy's. The role and the responsibility and the scope of the Supreme Court is to rule on the constitutional issues around elections, but not on an election result. I've spoken to a number of attorneys who all say that the Supreme Court doesn't have the authority to remove anybody from office. The Supreme Court has the ultimate say on what is constitutional, what their power is, and what their power is not. So anyone that would suggest that they know more, that they can say, tell you what the power of the Supreme Court is and is not, it's really up to the justices because there's no appeal after the Supreme Court. They can rule on the constitutional issues, but they can't rule on the results. Under the Supreme Court Rule 11, they can actually adjudicate the full complaint not just uphold the decision or reverse the decision. And here's another thing. Even the Supreme Court justices, they've all taken upon themselves the oath. They have an obligation, even under their oath as Supreme Court justices, to protect and defend the Constitution. But where does it say that, they, that the remedy to that is that they can remove every m member of Congress that voted for it and the president and so on and so on? Because over and over and over and over again, the legal opinions are that that Supreme Court does not have that power. We are hit with that question all the time. They have actually broken a constitutional law. And you're saying, well, what law was that? Well, it's their oath of office. Okay, so who gets to judge them? When you break your oath of office, when you committed that crime, you are now automatically, according to Article 3, in the jurisdiction of the judicial, judicial branch, government. automatically. And they get right. to judge that. Unfortunately for the Brunson brothers, they did not get to make their argument before the Supreme Court justices. As these letters they received from the clerk of the court show, their petition was denied every time, no reason given. And you got to remember, sometimes when you go to battle, sometimes you might lose the first battle, you might lose the second battle, but you may end up winning the war. So that's what, you know, so that's where we're at. And that's what, you know, I, I want people to not give up. Don't give up hope. I mean, 60,000 letters of people that wanted this thing to happen. Don't give up hope. This thing, we're still in this fight and we're going to push it for all that we got. Why, Darren? What if you're giving them false hope? What if it doesn't have a snowball's chance? You've got to ask yourself this question. Why fight for anything that's good if you feel like you're going to lose? It's important to stand up and to fight for that which is good because you don't want to be amongst those that didn't try. You want to be amongst those that are elevated really high because they fought, they tried. And this is a fight. This is a fight for our freedoms, for our rights, for this Constitution. We can't let it go down like this. And if we just start fighting, even in the only way that we know how, we can win. Reminiscent of their fight, Frank Capra's classic from 1939, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. An idealistic Smith, played by the legendary Jimmy Stewart, goes to the nation's capital to launch an impassioned challenge to a rigged system. Only to run up against a wall of cynicism and corruption. A man who controls a political machine and controls everything else worth controlling in my state. Yes, and a man even powerful enough to control congressmen. And I saw three of them in his room the day I went up to see him. Will the senator yield? No, sir, I will not yield. Like the celluloid hero Mr. Smith, the Brunson brothers have always danced to their own tune. You might think that after filing more than 20 motions over two years and being dismissed by the highest court in the land five times, they'd be ready to surrender. But you'd be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> 